If you've got the attitude, the skills, and the plan, a bank robber don't got a chance. I'm John Correa, the founder and owner of Active Self Protection, and I thank you for joining us today. Today's video was sent to me by the good guy here out of Birmingham, Alabama. Many thanks to Magtech Ammunition for sponsoring today's video. It's the only ammunition that goes through my pistols or rifles and is the best stuff on the range. Guy walking in here has actually committed a previous bank robbery uh, a couple weeks before and came into this bank the day before and cased the joint. And this guy coming out here is a security officer actually sent me this footage who watched him do that, paid attention to him. So when he came back in a second time and puts a hood on his face, then our security officer goes, whoa, this is bad juju. Now, dude walks up to the counter, pulls a gun right there, shows a gun to the clerk and announces an armed robbery, throws her a bag and says, hey, give me all the money. And now he's gonna look over and what's gonna happen here. I want you to see his hands and those things. You can see he's covered his face, put his hood up and all those kinds of things. Now, what we're gonna see from this other side is when he announces that armed robbery, our security officer has a gun, draws it out and says, hey man, uh, show me your hands, give up, you know. Uh, um, and dude does, he's gonna say, oh, okay, fine, man, whatever. Again, that gun was in his pocket, not in his hand. He just showed it and put it in his pocket. So then our bad guy is going to then lay down on the ground. Our security officer actually makes him lay down facing away from him. So once he gets the guy's attention, okay, fine. Guy lays down face away from him with his hands up. And now I'm gonna speed it up just for the sake of time because he's gonna have to hold him there for several minutes. Of course, our security officer has uh, alerted authorities, cops are on the way and all those things. He's gonna maintain some significant distance from the guy, look at him from several different angles while the employees get the heck out of there and get everybody on the way. So again, I've sped this up to about 500% just for the sake of time. Several minutes go by here. And when the cops show up, he is going to safely and carefully holster his firearm here. Police officers are going to take this dude into custody and he is facing, of course, a host of charges including felon in possession and multiple bank robberies and those kinds of things. Dude is going to be doing some serious time. And that is where this one ends. Crazy, great outcome in this particular instance. Please friends, consider joining us at our Active Self Protection National Conference. It's the last weekend in September outside of Manhattan, Kansas, all as a benefit for the Flint Hills Foster Teen Camp to help abused and abandoned foster teens. It is an incredible weekend of training and you get to come by making a donation to the camp. So please hit the link in the description and join us, won't you? Let's think about lessons out of today's video. First thing I wanna say, this is great paying attention because again, this loss prevention specialist, this, this uh, uh, security officer is paying attention to his world, sees what's going on, saw this guy in the branch the day before casing the joint, not doing normal banking things, but looking at security cameras and all those kinds of things, seeing where the money's kept and those kinds of things. And he also met the description of a bank robber that had hit a, another place previously. So. I think that's a really good job here of correctly profiling and we correctly profile based on behavioral cues. And again, this guy having come in the day before and case the joint, that's the kind of behavioral cue you want to pay attention to. So again, it's not based on uh, any demographic other than actual behavioral cues and that's correct. So dude walks up and he puts his mask up. Now, of course, in our current pandemic world where masks are required in a lot of places, simply wearing a mask in this day and age is not going to be a sign of an armed robbery. However, if you're not wearing a mask and then you walk into the bank and put your mask up and you put your hood up and you have gloves on your hands and those kinds of things, now that totality of the circumstances is an indicator that bad things are coming. And you always look at the eyes as well because the eyes are the windows to the soul and the eyes are not being covered. So watch the eyes because that'll tell you an awful lot about what someone's doing far more than what their mouth is telling you. So notice here that dude's gonna come up and announce an armed robbery. And I think the right answer here is uh, compliance. Now here what you can see is you can see the guy pulls the gun and shows the gun to the clerk and announces an armed robbery. Whenever somebody shows you a, a force multiplier, particularly a firearm, assume that they have the willingness to use it, assume that it is loaded, assume that it is real. You're under no obligations to give them any benefit of the doubt when they threaten you with a firearm, friends. And uh, of course, in this case, I think the clerk's right answer here, unarmed, those kinds of things, just give the guy what he wants, comply and hope for the best. Probably the only thing you can do and then let the security guard deal with the problem and the security officer deal with that. You know, you got armed security on site, hopefully they've seen the problem and they can deal with it. 
uh, asking the clerk to do something about that, probably pretty foolhardy at this point. So now our guy comes up and, and I want you to notice what the distances we're looking at here. That when he is first encountering this guy with his gun up, he's probably at about 10 yards from this guy. So having that ability and marksmanship to be able to hit a target at 10 yards, also notice that our security officer is moving. So just the standing marksmanship alone for most people at 10 yards is pretty difficult. So I would encourage you to have a very high level of skill to be really good with your firearm so that you can make those hits. Next thing, rather than having the gun up and on somebody, I really would recommend uh, working on a low ready position so that you can see the, the eyes and the hands. Because notice here as he's closed the distance a little bit and gotten the guy's attention, notice with the gun up, he'd have a hard time seeing both the guy's hands and his waist where the gun would come from. Next as well, I do think it's excellent that he issued a command here. Now, if the guy had a gun in his hand or whatever, he might not be able to do that. Might have had to just take the shot. But given that the guy has threatened with a gun, but the gun is in his pocket and immediately undeliverable, probably a great idea here to issue a command. Show me your hands, put your hands up, stop, those kinds of things. Simple, positive commands to try to take this guy at gunpoint before you shoot him. And that is an ideal outcome in my opinion, the mere presence of the defensive firearm affecting a positive outcome. So if you have the opportunity to do that, now again, if the gun was in the guy's hands, you wouldn't, but the fact of the matter is this guy didn't have a gun in his hands. He merely threatened with it and put it away. Great opportunity here to use his verbal skills. Now, notice I think it's great that he has this guy get down on the ground and face away from him. This is if you have to detain somebody here, this is the way to do it. Get them to face away from you so that they can't see you. You get into a place where you can see them, they can't see you. Now, I know somebody's gonna ask, well, what would have happened if he, this guy decides to run off? Probably just wanna let him run off at that point if he's gonna run off specifically as a private citizen. You know, you're not a law enforcement officer. You don't have any duty to protect the community or anything like that. Just let him go. You've defended yourself and the people around you and you've done a fine job. Now, I also like that this guy, that our, our, our security officer decided to keep his distance. You've got a firearm on you. And I know some people are gonna say he should have gone up and taken the firearm away from the guy. Well, I kind of disagree because again, that puts him in contact, could have really uh, gone bad in a lot of ways. Better to just stay on the guy from some distance and tell him if he makes a move towards his hand that he is gonna end up getting shot uh, at the very least, or maybe have somebody else do it. I do notice here maybe one little thing to think about is that when the cops show up, he kind of picks his muzzle of his gun up, kind of like, yep, here's my gun, I have a gun. I would really strongly recommend that when police are inbound, and you can usually identify them by the reds and blues and the sirens and those kinds of things, that you get that gun put away as quickly as you can. Whether you put that on the ground or in, you know he's known as security or whatever, and they say, hey, the known security guard, and this is what he looks like, and here's what it is, get that gun safely, carefully put away. And notice here that our guard, our, our security officer puts the gun away by looking it into the holster. He, he kind of you know fished at it a couple times, said, no, I can't do that, so then he looks his gun into the holster. It's one of the reasons that we talk about putting the gun in the holster and looking it into the holster is because under stress, you're probably going to want to do that because you're probably adrenalized. It's more difficult than you think. You're wearing an inside the waistband concealed holster, not like a police officer. So look the gun into the holster, did okay at that. Now, uh, and then the cops are gonna come and get this guy's face in a whole host of charges. So I really think this is a pretty ideal outcome here in terms of a good guy win. We had a, a good guy who was paying attention to his world. He used good commands because he could use good commands, took this guy at gunpoint, held him appropriately, and the cops were able to come and get him and nobody ended up getting shot. That's a perfect defensive gun use in this particular case. And I think that it is absolutely laudable. This guy helped everybody around in that building to cover their ass.